Welcome back, guys, to CFL Central, CFL content for the fans, by the fans. And we have our Week 16 preview. We're getting, we're getting, we're getting there, Rick. We're getting closer and closer to the end of the season. I'm getting excited. We're, we're approaching playoffs. Although there's only one thing that sucks about the CFL playoffs, and that's when it's over. Because we all, we love our CFL football. But we're not there yet. It's still Week 16. Uh, and our first game of the week is the Saskatchewan Rough Riders versus the Ottawa Red Blacks because uh, bo my, my beloved Bombers are not playing this week. They got this week off, but uh, we're heading to Saskatchewan – or heading to Ottawa, sorry, for Saskatchewan versus Ottawa. So we have the Jake Dolagala <coughs> versus the Dustin Crum, also known as I'm playing quarterback. I wasn't the plan, but here we are. So how do you feel – about the Riders matchup uh, against the uh, against the Red Blacks going into this week. So, as I sent you earlier, <laughs> both fresh off is, a loss. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting game because they don't have Lewis Ward for the rest of the season to make those extra 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 long kicks. Yep. So it's going to be. Mm, do we? believe in our new kickers that we brought in or what are we going to do and also just to throw this out there on saskatchewan's injury list yep 10 out of the 13 players did not practice today 10 out of 13 and it's funny though because the one thing i will say for saskatchewan is that i mean i think it's pretty clear that Saskatchewan's going to be getting that third spot over over the Stampeders. Although I will say, if there was ever a time for the Stampeders to try to get back into it and push for that spot, this is the week. They have a big game against the Alouettes. They would need to win that, and they need the Riders. The they need the Riders to lose to Ottawa here, and then that would put them basically at one game's reach. They would have no games in hand, but they'd be exactly two points behind, and so it's something like that where. You know, the Stamps would then play the Thai Cats afterwards. They'd need that win there, and they'd need to hope that the Riders would then lose to the Lions. So if you're the, if you're the Stampeders here, this is where I feel like the the you're having your kind of your last hoorah. Where if you wanna if you wanna try to make the playoffs, Week 16 is kind of like if if the Stamps lose this game and the Riders win, then the Stamps are done dead in the water for sure like that would be like the the, the nail in the coffin <clears throat> so here's here's some interesting numbers for you yep that i was looking at today so the first to score saskatchewan is three for three yep. like three and three ottawa's two, two and six interesting lead to the third quarter saskatchewan's five and one and Ottawa's two and three. Well, you know what you know what the thing is. The though, last well? the the last hold on. Here's a funny one. Yeah. The last three minutes of the game, Saskatchewan is six and three. Do you want to take a wild guess what Ottawa is? What what is it? I, I, I'm not two gonna... two and ten <laughs> in the last three minutes. Well, last game and, sure didn't help. Fucking giving up twenty three points you, in the fourth quarter. And you know who those last three minutes are against? Uh, who? Oh, Winnipeg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think right. Calgary was the other one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah that sounds about right. Yeah, because of but the, 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 the I want, back, as they said. I want... Oh, no, because that just ruins everything now. Because So here's the thing. Ottawa has lost seven straight. Have they lost that many in a row, really? Yeah. <laughs> Seven You're telling me they row. were three and three. Um, the last the three time and they... ten right now. If they've lost seven in a row, they were three and three. Because they just lost to BC, they lost to us. They're on a bye week. They lost to Edmonton, so that's three. They lost to Toronto, that's four. They lost to Saskatchewan by two, that's five. They lost to us again that by four, that's six. And then they lost to the Lions. Oh, no, sorry. So their last win mm -hmm. is July 23rd. Ouch. Yeah, if you're, if you're the and Red Blacks. And that was 
That was beaten Calgary by two. And that's the thing here that I will say is interesting is despite the fact that the Riders are the better team and the Riders are a bit of a favorite here, the the this is a winnable game for the Red Blacks. So this isn't a game that is brutally out of reach. And so it's one of those things where if you're if you're the Red Blacks, this is where you're looking to get back into the win column. If you're the Riders, this is where you're looking to really kill the last hopes of the Calgary Stampeders. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, my prediction is that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are going to come out on top and that uh, uh, the losing streak for the Red Blacks will continue. It's going to continue? Yep. Well, let me tell you. After this week, they play the Battle of Quebec and Ottawa next week when they play Montreal at home. And let me tell you, I'm picking the Riders, but if Toronto comes out flat foot this week, their fans are going to be booing them out of the stadium. Okay, you said the Battle of Quebec? Okay. Okay. Like... The East teams, however okay, you want to put it. I was about to say, I don't think you know where Ottawa is, Rick. <laughs> no, because... Uh, it's almost so, in Quebec. It's like right on the border, I know. You might as well say they're close to Gatineau, okay? No, no, that's fair. <laughs> Your no. face is like... <laughs> well, it's funny. I heard that and I'm like, Rick! <laughs> Rick! <laughs> okay, well, battle okay. of the East then, because they're rivals. The, 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 it's it, And Ottawa is like right on the Ontario border, to be fair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so overall, so who you who are you taking? I said riders. Riders, okay. So as, both as riders. much as I hate to say this, yeah. because all all's Red Blacks had to do uh-huh. was beat the Lions last week, and we could have kept our hopes for an East crossover, but nope, that's gone down the toilet. Yeah. Now, so our next game of the week is going to be the BC Lions versus the Edmonton Elks. In Edmonton. And it's interesting because if this was a month ago or I can't remember if it was a month or like or like a month and a half ago, we'd be saying BC all the way. However, Edmonton, ever <clears throat> since winning at home, has actually played pretty solid at home ever since they got that win, ever since Trey Ford went in for them. So it's one of those things where like with like and especially like as me being a Bomber fan. Uh, one of the playoff scenarios that the the CFL announced earlier is with a B, if if the Lions win and the Riders lose, uh, Winnipeg secures a a home playoff game. Uh, now, personally, I think the Riders are probably going to win this. And it, to be honest, I actually <clears throat> want the Lions to lose, just because at this point, the the, the <clears throat> there's really no way that the Bombers fuck it up to the point where they don't get a a play a playoff game at home. Because the thing, but the so, thing is, is that if you're the Bombers, you want the West Final at home. That's what you want. So I want BC to lose. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for Edmonton here. Rooting so here's, here's the other thing: yep. is BC loses to Edmonton, Montreal beats Calgary, BC clinches a playoff spot. Oh yeah. Interesting. Make that yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where it's interesting when you have teams clinching because really the only teams clinching that really matter are Hamilton are, and Saskatchewan. In the sense of those are the ones that like the they're at the point where at least they're not as much givens as the other ones. Now I think the Tie Cats one making it is pretty obvious at this point. The only thing that could beat the Tie Cats is the stamps somehow. If they were able to pull it out of their ass, um, it, it's it's not going to happen. But like, it just like it's one of those things where <clears throat> if if the Tie Cats somehow don't make the playoffs, it's not going to happen. But if it were to somehow happen, it wouldn't happen from Ottawa. It would happen from Calgary. Um, but the thing is, is that if if we're looking at this here, so how how are we feeling about this matchup? Because honestly. I actually feel like this is not too bad for the Elks in the sense of kind of getting a bit of a challenge back at home will be nice because at the end of the day with the, with the Elk season, with how much they really kind of pissed it away at the start <clears throat> and now, you know, Trey Ford's going in. If you're the, if you're the Elks, you're looking at 2024, you're looking at what momentum can we get? What can we set up now 
that can actually lead to a successful 2024 season. And so being able to not just get a win at home, but a big win against a team um, like the Lions is, is something that I think is key. Because that, that was kind of the question that I had for the longest time about the Elks. is like, okay, when they finally get that win at home, then what? Then what is it? And so the answer to that question has been <clears throat> Trey Ford era. And that setting up a team built around this guy is going to be what, you're wa- what you want. If you're going to bring talent in, you have to be able to show that not only is, that is Trey Ford the guy, but you're able to best other teams like the Lions that are considered a, a contender and, and an attractive option come the offseason. So it's one of those things where games like this will be important for the Edmonton Elks. So I presume you're taking the Elks. I'm not necessarily taking the Elks. I'm saying this is important for the Elks. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm still thinking about the it. Re- the reason why I say that is... I don't know if he is still on the six game or not. There is one of the BC Lions. Um, Dominic death Ryan's threats. For a while. Is it Dominic Rhymes? You know where I was going with I this. knew you were going with Dominic Rhymes. I'm like, Dominic Rhymes, he's been out for a while, hasn't he? And he is full practice. He's full practice? Yeah, that'll be huge. And because, I mean, even if, like if we're looking at the, the Lions, one of the things that's been key for the Lions is that they've been able to start getting a lot out of their other receivers. Like, I mean, if we're looking at last game, uh, Lucky Whitehead ran for tw- uh, he um, he was uh, had 87 receiving yards. If we look at McKinnis, he got 118. If you're the Lions, you do hope to get that running offense going uh, just because Vernon Adams Jr. got the most with 45. And then afterwards was 13 yards by Mizell last week um, uh, for the Lions. But the thing is, is that that receiving core can be so deadly. I mean, with McKinnis and Whitehead, Katoy, with Rhymes, uh, with uh, Keon Hatcher, uh, he only got thrown to once last game, but he got 20 yards out of that. Like, there's a lot of weapons that you have in that receiving core, and then adding Dominic Rhymes to back to the mix is, is lethal. And so, despite the fact that this game is extremely important for the Elks, and I am rooting for the Elks, as it I believe it helps my Bombers um, <clears throat> when it comes to clinching the West final, uh, I'm actually going to be taking the Lions here just because I don't think the Edmonton Elks defense is at a point where it's able to quite defend against so many threats. And so, and yeah, I think that I- as much as Trey Ford will have a great game, I think there will be at least some issues... Um, with that Lions, uh, with that Lions defense, I mean Lions are known for the defense, and I think it won't actually be as much on Trey Ford. I think it'll be more of the, those receivers in the sense of Trey Ford being limited, not having as many options to throw to, with guys being covered. I mean, if you're the Edmonton Elks, it's like Eugene Lewis has got to have a big game uh, th- this coming week. Uh, but I'm actually going to be going with the BC Lions of who I think is going to win. So. My thing is, which this game, yeah. So my whole thing with this week is, Mm -hmm. which which running back on the weak team has a better week? Williams, Devontae Williams for Ottawa against Saskatchewan, or Kevin Brown against Kevin Brown. But here's the thing, because BC at one point did have the top defense for sacks. No, that's true. That, that's true. But and now so. does Trey Ford and Kevin Brown have the passing and run game like they had last week against BC? It's a good point. Because yeah, it's, if it's if they do, things, though, then where... BC won't win. The that's reason the, the reason why I say I, I say Brown is simply for the fact that he's had some he's had some opponents he's gone against where you know, the odds wasn't in his favor, but he still made it work. So it's one of those things where I feel like even if the Lions are able to contain the offense of the Elks, um, I feel like they'll do decent. And I will and I will say with the Elks not having as many as not having even close to the options uh, receiving as the Lions do, they're going to rely <laughs> more on Brown. So that's kind of where, where I'm at with that. But so um, I'm I- 
I'm going to go with the Lions, but before we go to our next game, I just want to throw some little timbits out there since yep. you guys have the bye week. Mm -hmm. So Brown is 86 yards behind Oliveira for the rushing lead. Uh, I think it's more than that. According to CFL.ca stats after 15 weeks. Hold on a second. Let's go to three down nation. I thought it was more than that. I could be wrong. I it's was... 86 and, and do you know what the difference between Austin Mack and Dalton Schoen is? Uh, I'm not sure what that was. I thought it was over a hundred, uh, over a hundred yards though, between all of so, and Brown. But you got to, you got to remember Kevin Brown just had a 175 yard rushing game. That's a very good point. So maybe that wasn't up to date. Um, so Austin Mack or sorry, Dalton Schoen has 1,035 yards. Yep. Austin Mack has 1,016 yards. The question is, Montreal has a game in hand. Does Austin Mack pass Dalton Schoen by the end of the season? By the end of the season? <laughs> that, that, that's the question. I'm not I'm not sure. I mean, if you're the Alouettes, you're going to hope to have uh, – actually, maybe let, let, let's have that be the segue. Uh, you're gonna, if you're the uh, Austin Mack, you're hoping you're going to have a big game, which is our next game of the week. Um, which is the Montreal Alouettes in Calgary against the Stampeders. Uh, Alouettes here looking for uh, another win to... I have. You know what I didn't realize? <clears throat> the Alouettes and Ticats are tied. But, but, the Alouettes have the tiebreaker. I know, but I, I'm not going to lie. The Alouettes used to have a decent lead on the Ticats. That lead is a lot smaller than it was. As the lead now is just a tiebreaker. It's not. So when I was doing my tie cats talk live earlier, or tie, tie cats link talk in the description below. Yeah. Um, the interesting fact: yep. ever since uh, Tommy Condell got fired after we lost to Edmonton, mm -hmm. with Scott Milanovic as our OC, we have been three and one in the last four weeks. Yeah, no, it, it, it was the right call, and Scott Milanovic has been able to do well. Especially, like, we got to give, I think, extra credit to Scott Milanovic in the sense of he being able to get that much out of your offense when you're using someone else's offense. He's using Tommy Condell's offense that's been tweaked. He's not really able to use uh, all of his own probably the way that he would like, uh, which if you're the Ticats, you want to start that next season. Um but I guess let's not get too much into the tie cats. We'll get into that the, the, for the, the the next game. But but the thing is, is that with the Alouettes, this is an important game. As I mean, if you're if you're Montreal, you want to you know secure that that home playoff game. And so you know you got a game against the Stampeders, and the Stamps have struggled for a while. They have just been sliding and sliding and sliding. And so if you're the Alouettes, your goal is, you know, to <clears throat> to stop the throwing game because that's what the offense of the Stampeders is. It is Jake Mayer throwing. It there is there is no rushing. There 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 is there is not much of a rushing game for the Stampeders. Not saying that they can't pull something. I'm saying is that if you look at how much they've used Mayer, it's like he's throwing like 50 like he's doing like 50 attempts a game. Like it's clear that that's kind of what they're they're looking for, um, and so if you're the Alouettes, you you got to stop the passing game. Uh, if you're the Stampeders, <clears throat> get out of this slump. Like I said, for the Stamps, this is kind of the last this, this is kind of the last straw in terms of weeks where they can maybe start to turn it around and possibly sneak past uh, the Alouettes. So if you're if you're the Stampeders. Uh, it's now or never. And so because of that, I think Calgary will get a little bit of a sense of urgency. And I actually have the Calgary Stampeders coming out with a win. I think that this will be a bit of a I, – I think that this will be one of the, one of the, the surprise wins this week is that uh, I think the Stamps will so, best the I'm Alouettes. Even though the Alouettes nearly beat the Argonauts, I think the Stamps are going to feel a bit of a sense of urgency. And just based off gut feeling, I, I think the Alouettes are the better team, but I think that the Stamps will somehow get it done. So before I answer that question, yep, I have a couple of questions. Okay. So A, how do you think uh, 
Cody Fajardo will do. The sacking of Fajardo will do against the Calgary Oh, he'll get Stamps sacked defense. 10 times and still get up. The other question, the other question is, yep. well, kind of a two-parter, is Kadeem Carey is limited with an ankle injury this week. Yep. Mills is full. Kadeem Carey has only played five games this season, whereas Mills has done better. However, Stanback has is supposedly returning this week. So, how long do you think before Stanback's injured again, or do you think he'll have a top? Because, I mean, in order for Calgary to win, they have to depend on receivers other than Reggie Bangleton. Yep. Yeah, no, that's true. And the, and the, thing, and the thing is here is that, is that with the stamps, like you, you would like to hope that, that they get something. Because like you said, they can't just, they can't just rely on, uh, on Bangleton. Like if you look at la- uh, that last game they had, um, you got to get Markeith Ambles going. You got to get, you got to get, I think it's Mitchell, I believe. You got to get him going. Uh, in yeah. the last game against against the Elks, Mitchell got two, uh, 62 receiving yards. Yep, Dukes, that's a, yeah. another one. But it's one of those things where, um, as well, a, a thing that I think will be key here for the Stampeders is even if they're not able to put up a ton of touchdowns, if they can consistently get themselves in field goal range, Rene Paredes can really help just tack on a little bit each time. And so it's going to be one of those things where the, where the stamps will need to ensure that they're at least getting enough offense to get them in that spot for uh, Rene Paredes to get it done in the on the kicking side of things. Yeah, it's just – but the only thing is you can't always depend on Paredes. No, that's true. But I'm saying is that, like, again, it's one of those things where – I think the Saskatchewan, uh, not the Saskatchewan. I think the Calgary Stampeders as a whole need to have a bit of a wake up call moment in terms of this is our last chance to really get it going for the season. It's now or never. So the simple fact is, is that the team has to buy into that, and part of that is Rene Paredes. And if they don't, they're fucked. Like, well, I mean, because they, that's how they ha- I mean, they play us next week. So I mean, if they don't beat Montreal, then they would they would need to win like both games, like <laughs> just to break just to break even. So yeah. that's why I'm saying this is kind of like the last straw. Because um, if you if you think about it, after they play Montreal at home, they come play us. They're on a bye week. Then they play Saskatchewan, BC, and Winnipeg. Yeah. Well, so if they, they want any shot, to lose. <laughs> that, well, that's the thing. Like they need Saskatchewan to lose more than a couple of games. Yeah. Um, but. But overall, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the uh, with the stamps, even though it's probably unlikely, and it's probably gonna be the Alouettes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the stamps just uh, just for shits and giggles, even though it's not as much as I hate to say this. Yeah, I want Calgary so bad to win this game to beat Montreal, but my no, heart is saying go Montreal, but I know it's not gonna happen. And it's going to be Montreal that wins us and not Stamps. Yeah. But. Yeah, no. I, I think. There's a small chance that I want. I know. I know. It's just the. Uh, it's one of those things where it is totally logical that the Alouettes were winning this game. Just I have this gut feeling that the Alouettes are going to find a way to piss it away. I don't know. Like they, they've <clears> had <throat> some good game. They've had some last good, week like Toronto. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So let's get to our last game of the week. The Hamilton Tiger Cats versus the Toronto Argonauts. <clears throat> this game is <laughs> this game is huge because what what the Alouettes showed last week is that the Argonauts can be vulnerable, and what the Tiger Cats have shown ever since they've kind of started to come back is that this team, this Tiger Cats team, can get it done. I mean, we were saying at the start of the year that we thought that the Tiger Cats might be one of the, might be the best team even coming out of the East. Obviously, the Argonauts have played like that best team coming out of the East. But the thing is, is that we've been saying from the start, despite their slow start, that the Thai Cats are capable of beating the Toronto Argonauts here. So it's one of those things where this game is going to be in Toronto. I'm sure a lot of Thai Cats fans are going to be making the trip into Toronto to see this game, you being one of them. And so 
I am curious to see how this goes because, again, the Ticats have been able to kind of get it back going. I mean, they had a big win last week against my beloved Bombers. The Argonauts showed they were vulnerable against the Alouettes. How's this going to go? So here's here's my thinking because I was thinking about this earlier today. Yep. So out of all three games that we played Toronto, okay, Yep. two of them were huge losses during the Tommy Condell era. Well, the one that we lost to Toronto after we played, if I'm not mistaken, it was the BC game. Yep. Uh, no, that one was... Anyways, I think it was to the point where it was just before... Yes, Sorry, yeah, it was the Labor Day game because I'm thinking, why isn't Toronto out? Yep. So, with the momentum that we have, yeah, I'm sure they've made changes. No, I'm I'm sure. And with, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat this or anything, but they have one, two, three, four, five games left after this week. The Argos? I'm pretty sure. The Argos, because they have no more bye weeks. Mm -hmm. They got them all early. The question is, when do you start resting your players? Because they already got a playoff spot. They already got the East Final. When are they going to start resting their players? That's a good point. Uh, I mean, if you, you know, I I think the answer will be after this week in the sense of could they start resting them now? Yes. However, if you're the Argonauts, and the tie catch the, the rival, you win the rivalry game. The only thing that I will say is if there's going to be anyone that they're not going to arrest, mm-hmm. it's going to be Chad Kelly. The reason why I say that is because if you haven't seen their backup quarterbacks, and you know I'm not what, saying you know anything. Think, you know what I think they'll do? I could see uh, us getting to a point where we're seeing Chad Kelly play half games. Where he he'll come out play the first half. If they get a decent lead, he'll then go out. But then the other team will come back and win the game. Possibly. <laughs> I mean, because we all the, know. Not, but I mean, if you're the Argos, you expect more of it, more out of your defense to be able to shut that down. The point is, though, is that I I don't think it necessarily. I don't think it starts this game. I think we'll get to a point where Toronto starts resting players. I will. I do think though, with Chad Kelly being. In a situation where if Chad Kelly's injured, the Argonauts are fucked, that we will get to a point where Chad Kelly starts playing half games. And the last one or two games of the season, he might not even play at all because they've secured the East final. So, I mean, it's kind of one of those things where it really now it's just kind of managing that and making sure you keep your guys healthy. And so... I think so. <laughs> Maybe AJ Olette will become QB. Fuck, he threw a pass already. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking that Richard Leonard because I haven't seen the depth chart and they've only had one day of practice. Um, let me look at it. Yep. So Richard Leonard was limited. So something tells me he's gonna play halfback because I honestly don't have faith in uh, Lawson this week to um, start against Toronto. One rookie corner and one rookie halfback is not going to get the job done. Um, Chris Edwards, Anthony Federico, Joel Figueroa did not practice. Bo Levi, we know the whole story behind him. Yep. Tyler Ternowski got uh, removed from the six-game IR, so I'm curious to see how much his ankle is healed. Um, For Toronto... Uh, they have one, two, two players on limited, which is Bladdock and Brinkman, um, Carney, Cage, Harris, Boamba, Nichols. Oh no, sorry, Nichols played and Phillips have not practiced this week, and they have two more days of practice tomorrow and Thursday. I see, I see, I see. But. I know where you're going with this. You know where I'm going with this. 
I've always been telling people as of late, do never do not doubt the tat do not doubt the cats, and I'm not doubting them now. I'm full I'm a Miss M Mr. Mitchell's making me believe again. In the tie cats. He's making you believe. So, so is he gonna be playing this week or No. No? He's still on the sixth game. You think the that, interesting that, thing that, that Mr. Taylor is, Powell after that win against the Bombers is gonna keep it going? <sighs> So here, so here's by the divine my, power of Jesus, does Taylor Powell get it done? So here's the thing, because Matt Schultz was back up last week. The question is, does Powell start or does Matt Schultz or, start? Or is Schultz going? Um, with a Especially win against with, Toronto, with a win against Winnipeg, I think you start Taylor and BC. Powell. And BC, BC. don't forget BC. Taylor Powell starts the game. I think you keep Schultz on standby. The second Taylor Powell looks like he's about to start to fall apart. Schiltz. True. I think that's the way you run it. And at the end of the day, my prediction is that the Hamilton Tiger Cats will sneak away with it. Because, like, the Argonauts have only lost one game. they got to lose at least two more games. Oh, and by the way. so And I think our Bombers are getting one of them. If we win this week's game, yep. it's their first loss at home this year. Ooh. They're six no at home, so the pressure's on them to keep that Although home there record alive. There might be alive. more Tiger fans than there than there are Argo fans. So, so it's more of a home, a second. I was home about to, I was about to say the the only home game they lose is where it's arguably not a home game. <laughs> um, so, so I'm uh, I'm gonna be taking the Tiger Cats. I know you're taking the Tiger Cats. <laughs> um, <laughs> Over you, my dead if body. You did, if you I didn't guess the, by the, the hat, Argos. jersey, and flag. Um, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so overall, is there anything else you got for this week of football? I will say, I'm surprised the Bombers wearing a Bombers jersey and a Thai Cat hat with the last three, four years of the Grey Cups. <laughs> see, the, you, see, the reason, I, the reason I'm wearing it is like the, uh, the Bombers uh, in the Grey Cup final against the Thai Cats. Uh, I own this shit. Uh, <laughs> so I can wear what the fuck I want for a fucking video. I can, I can wear this red blacks hat for a video. I can wear this beautiful bombers hat for a video. Fuck. I can wear this goddamn lion's hat. Oh, California golden <laughs> seal scarf. Uh, and this, this lion's hat if I want to, I'm just when it comes out. to the tie cats in the, in the gray cup, I own this bitch. <laughs> all, all I'm going to say is. Yeah, I know Argo fans are have been shitting on us all year round. Makes sense. I don't give two sh two shits. If we beat them, mm -hmm. I want to see more re respect towards us. Even though we will, because I'm tired of them throwing this whole 1999. But that's trash. just sports fandom. No, no. That's but my general. whole thing is, is like they're on their high horse here. Of course, once they are. we beat. Once we beat them, then people will start to take us serious because then we've beat BC, Winnipeg, and Toronto. And what other team in the league do you think has ever beaten all three of the top teams this year? Ooh, some, some fighting words from Rick. But anyways, I think that will pretty much conclude it. We've gone on for quite a while. Two straight videos of quite long, lengthy ones. Uh, that is it for our preview of week 16 of CFL action. Make sure you guys comment down. But what the fuck is Rick doing? Because <laughs> I looked at 30. Stop distracting me. Stop. <laughs> no. Stop distracting me. Fuck. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe if you have not already. Comment down below your predictions of this week of CFL action. Make sure to subscribe to the Nolan Hockey Podcast for bomber videos and to tie cats talk network rick's channel for tie cats content links to both of those in the description below and uh yeah we will see you guys next time Touchdown.